we are classifying systems today. So there are a few different types of systems. There's two different types, and then one of the types has two different types, okay? So I need you to get pencil and paper um, and some notes so that you can follow along with me and figure out how to classify these systems. Let's go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand of the places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Okay. So the first type of system that you're going to have is consistent systems. Okay? Consistent systems are the types of systems that have solutions. So consistent systems have solutions okay there's two types of consistent systems you can have a dependent system okay and a dependent system is when the system um, has infinitely many solutions okay so there's two different things that you can look for if you're looking at a graph and the lines are the same so it looks like there's just one line on the screen because the lines are right on top of each other, then that is a dependent system. It is consistent and dependent, okay? If you are looking at an equation, so you're solving by substitution or you're solving by elimination, then if you are uh, find an answer that says 11 equals 11 or 12 equals 12 or negative five equals negative five, that is a true statement <clears throat> and that means that it is a consistent system that is dependent. Okay, so those are the things that you're looking for. Now, you can also have a consistent system that is independent. Okay, if you have a consistent system that is independent, um, that means that you have two lines, they cross and they touch. Okay, that is going to touch at exactly one solution all right and when that happens you call that system consistent because it has a solution remember all consistent systems have solutions and if it's independent then it is one solution okay like a fixed number of solutions now the second type of system is an inconsistent system so Moving away from the consistent systems, we're inconsistent systems. Inconsistent systems are when you have no solution, okay? Things that you're gonna look for on a graph, you would look for two parallel lines. So lines that are never going to touch. And then if you're solving by hand, when you come up with a statement that is not true so zero equals 11 that is not true zero does not equal 11. if you get 15 equals 12 that is not true when you come up with a not true statement it is an inconsistent system period we're not talking about independent or dependent none of that just inconsistent throw it in its own topic if it's consistent you then have to classify it between dependent and independent <clears throat> so we're gonna do some examples. Okay, classify the system. I'm looking at some graphs, right? So classifying graphs, we can see that I have two lines that cross. They touch at one space. So does it have a solution? That's the first question that you need to ask yourself. Yes, it does have a solution. Great, if it does have a solution, then I am automatically gonna say that that is going to be um, independent, okay? Oh, hold on. Let me move these, okay? So if I have one solution, I'm gonna say that it is consistent, and because it's only one solution, I'm gonna say that it's independent, okay? So the first thing is, is it consistent? Is it inconsistent, okay? You choose between the two. If it is consistent, then you have to choose between dependent and independent, okay? So this one, no solution, right? So if it's no solution, then I would say that that is an inconsistent system, period. That's my answer. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. All right, 
And then the second one, notice, or the third one, notice that both of those lines are right on top of each other, okay? So that's infinitely many solutions. When it's infinitely many solutions, it does have a solution. So I'm going to say it is consistent, um, but it's dependent, okay? Those are your three options, consistent, independent, consistent, dependent, or inconsistent. Okay, okay so, so let's, let's say I'm solving, solving by hand. hand and uh, doing it algebraically, right? right? So I'm gonna go ahead and solve this system by elimination and I'm gonna cancel out one of my variables, right? So I'm gonna change around one of the systems so it's in standard form and then I'm gonna multiply that bottom system by negative one so that the positive one is gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna get x minus two y equals negative a and then I'm gonna get negative x plus two y equals, equals negative, negative six. six. And, and what you notice, notice is the positive x and the negative x are is going to turn into zero. Um, and then the two y and the negative two y and the positive two y is also going to do the same thing. So when I add down, what am I going to get? I'm going to get zero equals negative 14, but that is a false statement. When I end up with a false statement, I know that the answer is no solution, okay? So this, this is where you tell, tell me what, what the answer, answer is, is okay? okay? If, if it's, it's a false, false statement, you know it's no solution, so what do you say? The system is consistent or inconsistent. You would say inconsistent, okay? And that's your only answer, inconsistent, period. Now let's do the next one, right? I have to change my do by elimination again. So I'm going to say times three times three times three for everything over there so that it can turn into a positive six so it cancels out with that negative six, right? So I'm going to get positive six x plus three y equals negative three and so those are going to strike, strike, strike um, and I lost both my variables again. So I get zero equals zero. That's a true statement so I know that there's going to be infinitely many solutions, so I have to make a decision. Does that mean that it's going to be consistent, or does that mean it's going to be inconsistent? Well, because it has a solution, infinitely many of them, I'm going to say that that's a consistent system. So now I have to determine, is it dependent or is it independent? And when I do that, because it's infinitely many solutions and not just a single solution, it's definitely going to be dependent. Okay, last example. So let's say I have a system. I'm gonna solve this one by substitution, right? Um, or am I solving it by elimination? Just kidding, by elimination. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve this one. So I'm changing the second equation so that there's a negative y so that those cancel out. So notice I have a positive y and negative y. Those are gonna cancel out. I love to see it. Okay, so now I have two x plus four x. So I'm gonna get six x equals negative six, okay? So then I'm gonna divide by six. I'm gonna get x equals negative one. So I'm getting a solution here. So this is a good thing. I, my variables didn't cancel out like the last two examples. I'm solving, I have, so I have to finish solving the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the negative one and I'm gonna plug it into one of my equations. I chose the purple one. Um, so instead of x, I'm gonna use negative one. So when I do that math, I get negative 2 plus y equals negative 4. I get plus 2 plus 2. I'm going to get y equals negative 2. Um, so now I have an answer. My answer is going to be negative 1 comma negative 2. This is a fixed solution. I have a solution. So when you have a solution, is it consistent or inconsistent? It's consistent. Yay! Okay. okay, and, and then, then because it's one solution, is it dependent or independent? It's independent. Okay, so, so that's, that's my final answer. Consistent, consistent independent. independent. Yay, that's, that's it. it. Classifying systems in a nutshell. You should go back to the video, see if you can do them without my help. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.